What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Brutal Planet Comics. I'm your host, Trey the Brew Daniels, and welcome to another episode of Brutal Rant. <sighs> okay, you've seen the thumbnail, so let's just get the booze over with. Lord Jesus. Yes, yes, yes. I'm still torturing myself and watching Young Justice Phantoms episodes five through eight. Now, before I even get, in, get into this review, one, we already know that it's trash, but to its credit, it is light years, light years better than issues or issues. <laughs> episodes one through four. Episodes one through four was offensive to all five senses and Oh my, oh my god yeah if you've seen my review you know how bad how bad that joint was straight up and down so these episodes at least were action-packed i wasn't boring it wasn't boring i wasn't bored at least so a step up but once again there's no story to be told there's no over -arc arching um story arc there's nothing it's just random stuff happening we already know it's going to be trash. So let's just let's just get through this. All right, so they're completely out of ideas at this point. They're out of ideas. They have literally rehashed the mole, like who's the mole from season one. They literally brought that back for four episodes, and it was lame because we already know who the mole was right when the junk showed up. So we get now for those that don't know the characters, <laughs> be thankful. We get this one character, Onyx, who I'm personally, I have no idea who that even is, who is the uh, young lady, the young uh, black lady with the dreads, is Onyx. And we have Cassandra Savage, who is daughter of Vandal Savage. Gee, I wonder who's the mole. <laughs> uh, whatever. And Tigris is basically like, hey, I'm going to discover who the mole is, even though they're both looking for like sanctuary away from the League of Assassins. Or League of Shadows, as I said in this show. I'm already not interested whatsoever. I'm not interested at all in what's going on. Because I don't know what the villains are after. They never made it clear what they're after. Excuse me, it's been eight episodes. And we still don't know what the villains want anyway. Or what the heroes are trying to do. It's just non... Whatever. So that's the premise. The premise is Onyx and uh, Cassandra Savage go to um, uh, Tigress's team. And like, are looking for... Uh, sanctuary away from the League of Assassins. It's stupid. Alright. So, one thing that was cool, like I mentioned, we all said action sequences are really, really dope. Um, we get some cool stuff with Arsenal and Arrowhead and um, Red Arrow. Um, and then some of the other characters that don't matter. But anyway, they can't decide, of course, who is the mole. So, we go through the first two episodes, pretty much, of... Uh, Tigress having flashbacks about like her childhood and being raised by Sportsmaster and things with uh, Cheshire. But we're going to get to that. We're going to get to that because I, I like Cheshire. I actually like her in this uh, in, in these episodes as well. So it's not all bad. But, you know, you're, you're, pr you're pretty much spending your wills and wasting your time um, with all of this. Whatever. And we'll get to dag on a uh, orphan in a second we're gonna we're gonna talk <laughs> we're gonna talk about orphan we're gonna, <laughs> we're, gonna ooh, we're gonna get to that all right so tigress can't figure out uh, who's the mole so he turns she turns to her sister uh cheshire lures her in and be like hey you you used to be part of the league of assassins help me discover the mole obviously they can't like she can't decide she can't figure it out Onyx is telling the truth or whatever. It, th that stuff is kind of lame. But the action sequences, once again, that's leading up to these points are really cool. Fight scenes are really on point. But it just means nothing. These fight scenes mean nothing because it doesn't lead to anything. And there's no overarching story, like I said before. It's a waste of time. It's a complete It's a complete waste of time. Why am I do? What am I... Why am I doing this? Why am I watching this crap? God. It's all a waste. It's all a waste of time. You're not doing any... You're, they're not doing anything. <sighs> Whatever, man. All right, moving on. So, oh, yeah, this, oh, crap, this scene. So, um, Tigris, oh, I'm gonna keep calling it Tigris all the time. Artemis is moving on with her life, finally, after Wally passed. And so she's dating this war veteran. And 
man, this scene is so awkward and weird. Because they just make him look like a goofball. And this is a war hero, and he looks like a goofball. They pretty, they, they pretty much talk him. Like, like, when Cheshire comes, she just berates him. And then he goes off on his jog. It, it's, it's a really awkward and very cringy scene. But I had to talk about it for a hot second, because... Man, it's... It's it's not okay, man. It, that that joint was that joint was not cool, but whatever. What is this, man? It's, it, I, uh, it's, I don't I, I don't know why, why am I watching this? Why am I watching this? I could be watching paint dry. What am I watching this for? Whatever, man. So anyway, we get to the point where the League of Assassins tracks him down. Once again, we have a really, really, really cool fight scene. That means nothing. Um, so ultimately, um, um, Lady Shiva, who is leading the assassins, shows up to, man, she doesn't even try to take, whatever, they're staging a big fight because we already know that Cassandra is the mole because who doesn't know that? So they stage this fight to ultimately kidnap Orphan because that's Shiva's daughter that she cut out her vocal cords and this is very strange it's like like hey we're gonna stage this fight for you to steal data that we didn't know we, we as the audience don't know or care about what you're stealing but there's a side thing about oh I, I want my daughter back to it's very strange it's a very very odd sequence of events so so she kidnaps orphan and uh of course it's re revealed to tigress that orphan is the, the the daughter of uh oh my god lady shiva it's just very strange it's very odd and like oh if you don't bring me the mole or bring me both of those traitors i'm gonna kill her but then we know we're not gonna kill her because literally two seconds after that it's revealed that that's her daughter it's freaking weird it's freaking weird and and, and once again it's, it's going nowhere it's going nowhere, but whatever. Let's talk about something that I actually did like. Uh, uh, okay, two things I actually liked. No, one thing. Two things. Huh. All right, one thing I liked was Cheshire. I think she got a lot of good development in these episodes. Um, you actually see why she, why she, her inner turmoil, and which why she doesn't want to be around her kid because she feels that she'll be a negative influence. And there's a scene in, at, at the very end when she's about to reveal herself to her daughter for the first time in god knows how long but her daughter has a cheshire mask and she wants to wear like i want to be like mommy and then she freaks out we'll get to that in a second but i think i think her development is done very very well um yeah her, her development is done very well um yeah i like i like what they're doing with cheshire that's about it that's the only thing i can really say hey you're doing something right with also, I like the fact that McGann is going Billy Berserk on Mars because, ooh, I don't know, Superboy was murdered for no reason. And she's obviously turning over every stone on who who did it, who is the one that killed her fiance. And so, like, she has a nice, cool scene when she goes after her brother and, and beats up his minions and then, like, traps him and starts making some demands of why she killed, like, killed him. And he didn't know anything about the kryptonite. That scene was really cool because to show there's actually some consequence of the previous four episodes, at least. Because everybody on Earth is like, oh, we're going to give him the holographic statue and then move on. No funeral, nothing. Just like, eh, statue. And I, Superman has an emotional breakdown, which is fine, I guess. Um, But there's no tributes to the man. I mean, like he is one of the original members and there's no... There's no gathering of all the old members and sitting there talk and talking about it. Like there was no emotional connection to the fact that Superboy, one of the mainstays of the first first two, I ah, forget third season, the first two seasons, one of the most important characters is dead. It just kind of glossed over, like oh people are upset. There should be tributes, parades, anything, but it was it was lame. But 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 to actually see that McGann actually is doing something about it. Um, unleashing her rage that's cool i like that but that's pretty much it that's as far as we go for the like so <sighs> here we go so the 
obviously, <laughs> Cassandra Savage is the bad guy. Ooh, ooh, oh, how did I not see this coming? And betrays them. And of course, they stop her. And then they have, once again, really, really cool fight scene that means nothing and goes nowhere as far as overarching story is concerned. They fight off Shiva and the League of Assassins and Shiva gets stabbed by Orphan and oh, good lord, ooh, we're gonna talk about Orphan and oh my god, I can't wait. I can't freaking wait. He gets stabbed by Orphan after they fight because mommy, mommy, daughter issues, whatever. It's, but of course she doesn't finish her because oh god oh okay okay i gotta get to it i gotta get to it she doesn't finish the job for a very particular reason and we're gonna get to that right now brace yourselves ladies and gentlemen brace yourselves hold on to your butts because we about to go for a full-on meltdown so there's a flashback scene in which barbara gordon is back girl at the time joker is about to destroy the u.n building now and if you remember in the first season, I'm taking you back to when the show was good, um, there was this, um, the, the, um, the Legion of Doom they put together and Joker and Poison Ivy, um, Atomic Skull, a bunch of other, other, uh, villains formed the Legion of Doom, but of course there were pawns of the light and, you know, uh, Vandal Savage. So the story that's going is like, everybody knew that it was just a distraction except the Joker. And he thought it was actually real and he figured out that it wasn't real so he's like i'm gonna take my revenge on vandal savage for reasons beyond my understanding um the league has a problem with him talking trash and so they send orphan at the time who was part of the assassins to go and kill him at the un building so the bat family ends up you know stopping joker and joker's running away but he throws some gas and orphan tries to kill him and Batgirl pushes him out the way and gets her spine slashed which then makes her into Oracle and she's handicapped and whatever now there is a bazillion things wrong with this first of all it it's an insult to the killing joke one of the greatest Joker stories of all time it's an insult to that of when she he cripples Barbara Gordon but let's just take everything into context for a second. Batgirl has no idea who she is. All she knows is that she's a crazy broad swinging a sword. She, they have no allegiance to each other at all. And she risked her life to save Jokers for no reason. And the reasoning while she's sitting there bleeding out is like, oh, it's not to save him, it's to save you. You don't know her. You don't know her from Eve. You don't know who's under that mask. Nothing. Nothing. You just pushed the most notorious criminal out of the way from being assassinated for no reason. Although she's sitting there bleeding out. This scene is so ridiculous on his face. So nobody from the Bat family reacts. So Dick Grayson is there. Batman's there. Robin's there. No one reacts to the fact of a random assailant just paralyzed. Batgirl. No one reacts to it. Nothing. Nothing at all. They just like, oh, I guess you're cool. And then, while she's bleeding there and they're tending to her wounds, flash forward, she's part of the team. So literally, the catalyst of her joining the team was the fact that she almost killed Batgirl? Who's writing this? I... What? I, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't do this, I can't, I can't do this. I, who's writing this? Who's writing this? I need names, addresses, phone numbers. I need information because this is the, uh, this is so insanely stupid and insulting to so many different characters and levels and stories that this scene alone should be burned it should be burned with fire 
I hate this. I hate this show. I hate this show. The show shouldn't exist. This is crap. This is trash. What? <sighs> you came here to die. I hate this show. I hate this show. So because of this moment and her joining the team and all this stuff, that's the reason why she can't kill her mother who tortured her, cut her throat out and all other stuff. It's because of this moment when she nearly killed Barbara Gordon and then their BFFs and I can't, I can't anymore. I can't anymore. So they return back home and that and the scene I was talking about earlier with Cheshire um, in regards to like seeing her daughter and all that other great stuff. She freaks out, heads back to the League of Assassins, like, hey, fix me. And then they're like, sure, because we're not in the killing business. It's, ah, it's whack. It's whack. Goes all the way to, uh, what was it, uh, Infinity Island. And it's like, yeah, we're going to help you out mentally and everybody else that was. Not, not now, Ra's al Ghul runs a therapy place. It's such a joke. This show is a joke from the top down. It's a joke. It's, it's trash. I'm done talking about this. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I can't do this anymore. I can't do this anymore. Why do I torture myself? <sighs> Thank you for watching the vid. I appreciate you, your viewership. <laughs> it's such garbage. This is... God. Father... It's trash it's so bad it's so bad oh it's so bad all right whatever thank you for watching the vid appreciate you all hanging out for me this long um tell me what you think about it this last f f four episodes in the comment section below or hit me up on all those dope social media platforms you see over there uh namely uh, i'm trying to raise my twitter following up following up so definitely hit me up at the brute zero zero on twitter and don't forget to like comment, subscribe, and share the vid. Once again, thank you for hanging out with me, and I'll catch you all next time. Also, if you want to support my channel, uh, check out spinwiz.com or download the Spinwiz app and check out my comic series, Trouble. It was written with a lot of love, and it was definitely my favorite comic series to write. I've also written it in English and in Spanish, so whatever floats your boat, I got it for you. Thanks again, and check it out.